What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead and do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. All right, so today's video is going to be another quick one. We're working in Studio One version 4.1.1. And in the release notes, I'm not sure if you caught it, but there was something along the lines of being able to select multiple pads in Impact XT. Now, I think that this one slipped through the cracks for a lot of people, but this is something that I think potentially a lot of people might be interested in. So if we take a look at some basic presets, we can navigate to some presets over here. Uh, maybe we'll navigate back a little bit. You'll notice that a lot of them have multi-out setups. And although this is great because it's nice to have these individual elements on a fader, sometimes, or to be honest with you, most of the time for me, I don't quite agree with the multi-out setup that's been created in the preset. So what I end up wanting to do is reset them all to, for example, the main stereo output, and then I will recreate my own routing that I want. So if we take a look at this one, for example, I've got my impact control over here. Let's just trigger some of these sounds over here. Okay, so we've got a lot of different sounds and you can see that they're going out. We'll see if we have anything on bank B. No, bank B is empty. So the great news is by using either the shift modifier or on a Mac, it's command and on a PC, I guess that would be control. I can, for example, select multiple pads together. And then the great thing is that I can change their output. So I could change all of these to, for example, output eight, and I've just changed all of them together. Now, something else that we can do, and in fact, let me just get rid of the monitoring here for a second. Actually, in fact, I'm just gonna turn my outs all the way down, is for example, if we hold down shift and then we select opposite ends, you'll notice that a lot of them are selected here. Now, for some reason, it leaves these three out and these three, uh, regardless of whether I do that. But if you start at the top right corner and hold shift and use the bottom left corner, that seems to work and conversely, the opposite as well. So starting from the bottom left, holding shift and clicking the top right. Now, for example, I could choose any out that I wanted to, or I could set these all to output one. And then of course, you'd have to come in here and you'd have to remove the multi outs from your setup. Now the benefit here is now I could go ahead and either use my command modifier and I could group my like elements together. So for example, Maybe I want to keep these, maybe I want these to be a mono track, you know, for example, and then maybe for my snares, let's go with my rim shot, my snare one, and this one over here, maybe I want these all to be out mono two, and then my claps over here, actually, I'm going to use the command modifier that allows me to select non contiguous pads together, I could set these up to be really however I want. Another cool thing I noticed is that if for example, uh, let's go ahead and highlight all the hi-hat pads. One thing that we can also do in addition to being able to set them out to their own output is that I can also, for example, with all three of these selected, I could come in here and I could set a choke group. So maybe choke group one. Now you'll notice that each one of these is set to choke group one. So I could do the same, for example, the bongos. So maybe I want these guys to come out stereo four and also I want them to have their own choke group. So choke group true two. So it's just, you know, a really easy way to be able to set things up. And it was something that always bothered me. Keep in mind, starting at the bottom left, holding down shift and selecting the top right should select all of them. And then we can, for example, come to any output that we want. So we could set them all to output one. And of course, the last step is to just get rid of any outputs that we're not using. And we can simplify our view quite a bit. Anyways, hope that you guys got something for this. Any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Hopefully all of these key commands translate perfectly over to the PC world as well, but definitely worth exploring. So once again, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And we'll catch you next week. Cheers.